So basically, it was like a, I want to say you said Scottish farmer or something, right? So this is this might be me maybe a little off, but it was some like Scottish farmer. That's is that one? One day he hears some boy screaming, screaming, screaming. He runs. You want to stay for this, Joel? You want to hear this? Scottish farmer hears this boy screaming, 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 and he goes to this boy's age drowning in a pond. He ends up throwing a rope, getting the boy out, getting him to safety, and you know warming him up, putting some clothes on him and stuff. The boy's like, "Thank you for saving my life." He leaves. Here comes this dude, royalty, comes out there. He's like, man, you saved my son's life. I'm going to give you bread. I'm going to give you money. I'm going to help you. I want to. And the guy's like, I don't want anything. I would have saved his life anyway just to help him. You know, he goes, well, at least since I know you're not going to take any money, let me take your son with me and educate him. Because you're a farmer or whatever and your son needs education, I'll take him and I'll teach him education. So the guy, farmer, is pretty cool. He lets the guy take his son to go give him an education. Later on, this boy gets educated, ends up coming up with penicillin, and the antibiotic that saves I don't know how many people since the time, right? This is in London, England. He goes to school and all this stuff happens, right? He ends up developing the penicillin antibiotic or whatever. And check this out. Later on, the, the royalty dude's son that was saved in the pond ends up getting a sickness, pneumonia. Only can be healed by what? The penicillin that this... So this dude basically... Came and later on, you know who the boy was that had the uh, pneumonia and almost died? Winston Churchill. So Winston Churchill was in the hospital about to die. And if that royalty wouldn't have came and took the young man, you know, and then I guess everything that it, it's just time. The way everything just ended up, you know what I'm saying? Time is what he was saying. Time is how all that ended up. But I just thought it was pretty cool how he said that, you know, this guy saved this guy. So this guy took his son who later came over there and actually him doing the right thing and doing that for his son and coming back and taking him, developing the pen, saved his son two times. You know what I'm saying? I just thought that was pretty fucking cool how that all worked out. Oh, yeah. I was good. My, my pastor came up with a, like a, a wild, like the way he puts the, the service together. Man, it's insane. What did he say? Uh, it's called a breakthrough. We're talking about something called the breakthrough. Like, everyone's got a breakthrough. Some people have already had their breakthrough. Some people, they're just waiting. Man, God, when's it gonna, when, when am I going to get that breakthrough? When am I going to get that job or that extra money or that whatever? So it's like about breakthrough, right? And he was talking about how, you know, Jesus' timing is always perfect. He's never late. He may not be there when you want him to be there. You know what I mean? But he's never late. He's always on time. And it talks about his timing. It's perfect for everybody and everything that he does. And it was, it was pretty cool because then, boom, he ends the whole service after talking about timing and talking about how Jesus was supposed to go save a man's, you know, a royalty man's daughter. But on the way, you know, you want this guy, Jesus, to go save your daughter. But he sees this poor woman that's a bum and no one, nothing. And, you know, she grabbed a hold of one of his garments and healed herself instantly just by faith. And, uh... Basically, he was like, who touched me? Someone touched me. Who touched me? Because he could feel the power leave his body. And he was just walking. And it was funny that he said, who touched me? Why? Because he's in a crowd of everyone touching him. Everyone's touching him. He's Jesus. He just landed on the other side of the island from the Gentiles to the Jews. And he's walking around. And all the Jews are like, man, this is the man. Like, but he felt one lady grab his. It was like a garment that he wore. It's like what the priest used to pray under or whatever. You know, everybody wants their time. Their time. But Jesus... It's always time is always perfect, you know, like you want him to hurry up and hurry up and save your daughter. But in his eyes, he's like, man, I got your daughter. Just chill. You know, he's like, hold on. Who just touched me? Let me stop. Who touched me? And then he lets this girl tell a story. Meanwhile, this guy's daughter is dying. And he's like, man, come on, man. Like, let's get to my daughter. Fuck the bum. You know who? Fuck her. And Jesus is obviously treating everybody the same. And then he goes to the place and everyone's like, dude, your daughter's dead. You know, like. Why are you even trying to get waste this teacher's time? Like, don't waste his time. And uh, the guy that talking shit, he didn't even see what Jesus just did for that woman. So when Jesus gets there, everyone's laughing at him. Like, man, the baby girl's dead. Like, they're all laughing, mocking him. And he's like, all right, everybody out. Kicks everybody out of the room. And he's like, you know, girl, be awake or whatever. And he awakes her. She comes out. And everyone freaks out, you know, from a dead... They were at a funeral. Yeah. Imagine being in a funeral, your first people's dead, and then here comes this dude, like... Don't get up here, boy. Hey, everyone leave real quick. 
um, she ain't dead, she's just sleeping. That's what he tells him. She ain't dead, she's just sleeping. That's, he says it all chill. Now just leave the room. You know, nobody argues with Jesus. He says it and they walk out. It's like the, boy, he was just too swole. They didn't want to argue. It's like if I walked in the room, everyone out. It was like, <laughs> not saying I'm like Jesus. I guess that's kind of what I was saying. But he was swoller. So when he said it, they really were scared. The royal swoleness. They were real scared. And he had 12 swole disciples. So he's like, yo, get him out. Bounce him. 